Ladies and gentlemen, hurry, hurry, hurry. CF Ambulance Hardware Store, now open for business. Come on in, folks. See the lowest prices, finest merchandise east of the Mississippi. Come on in, gather up, take a look. Come on up, folks. No, you can stay here. We're all coming in this way, okay? And you might want to stand back when I make that marketing announcement. I get a stampede that usually comes up. <laughs> you don't want to get trampled down under. It's like that. Okay. We're all set, folks. I want to welcome you all to Mr. Hamlin's Hardware Store. Charles F. Hamlin, he opened the store here in 1875. Now the Hamlins were a big deal in hardware in the Northeast. They had stores in Maine and Massachusetts back into the 1830s. That Indian was in front of one of his stores in 1834. When he comes to St. Augustine, 1875 opens a little tiny store. When we go through the doors, it's 1908, 33 years later. In those 33 years, he's turned this tiny store into a million dollar business. And the way he did that was he never said no. Millionaires are coming out of here. They're coming to building hotels and mansions. They come to him, can you get me chandeliers? He goes, yeah, sure, I could do that. How about ma mattresses? Yeah, no. building supplies. No matter what they asked for, he said yes, he delivered. He turned this into the largest store in St. Augustine, third largest store in the entire state of Florida. Now, that being said, my name is Orville, and I make 25 cents an hour. <laughs> that, that's actually pretty good pay, 25 cents an hour. I'm, I'm, I'm making $3 a day. I'm making $60 a month. You, you don't seem impressed. I don't know. <laughs> but, oh, I'm, I'm not bragging. We're going to hear prices on the inside. You can do the math and figure out what it costs for me to buy something for the family. So why don't we go inside? Tell me they're going to electrify this thing. Okay? But anyway, come, come on in, folks. Come on in. Step on in, Mr. Hamlin says if we don't have it, you don't need it. It hasn't been invented yet, just not necessary. Anything and everything you need, we have here in the general store. Uh, we have washboards, lock lines. That's right, we hang our ladies' unmentionables right here in the window. I think that attracts the men. It's something like that. Little, little sewing machine right there. Groceries, dry goods. The violins begin down here. If you want to take up a musical instrument, our violins begin $2.25 for a violin, okay? But I like starting off with the modern day appliances, things that are going to save the ladies time in the kitchen. Right over here, folks, we have a coffee grinder. Now, this will fit in most kitchens, I imagine. Wink, 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 wink. This is industrial size. Hotels would have this, the millionaires in their big kitchens. The regular size family coffee grinder is the red one on the table there. But hotels would have this. This is big enough where you put the beans in here, down in the hopper. A couple of turns of this big thing here and you've made enough grounds for a pot of coffee. Now, ladies, this comes in decorator red, so it doesn't clash with any colors in your kitchen. And it's $12.80. This is $12.80. We can have this wrapped up and delivered to your house in two weeks. Now, any, anybody here from Florida? We have Florida folks, Florida folks, yeah? We, we have hurricanes here in Florida, right? You know what people use this for during a hurricane? They hold on to it, just like yeah. this, is the <laughs> last, this is the last thing to go on your property, guaranteed, all right? Got that wrapped up, delivered to your house in two weeks. Now, and another time-saving device that we have here, especially for the ladies, Ma'am, I don't think the gentleman knows what you go through in the kitchen. You gotta, you gotta take the kernels off the cob like this. It's a painstaking thing that you gotta do. Wears and tears on the thumbs. Ooh, look at how shoot them all over the place. You don't have to do that anymore. We have a one hole corn shell. Drop that in here. Put the safety device back on. Give this a turn. Taking those kernels right off that cob. You can do a whole bushel with no time flat. Let's see how this thing turns out on this end over here. Not too bad here. That's much most of it off end. You can just scrape it off like that. And it goes off real fast. Now it, it goes in looking like that, comes out looking like this. Now, we, we recycle everything in 1908. You know what people use this for? This oh, well, don't okay. get ahead of me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get there, but I'm starting clean, okay? <laughs> I'm going with a toothbrush, okay. and then I'm going with a back scratcher, and now I'm working my way downtown. This can also be TP on a stick, okay? The toilet paper on a stick, you know, uh, that, that's too much information, I think. But anyway, can you imagine a time in this country where we'll ever run out of toilet paper? I don't think that'll ever happen, but if it ever does, we have something to fall back on, okay? $5.15. Five fifteen. we can have that wrapped up, delivered to your house in two weeks. <laughs> now, you know you're saving yourself time with these household chores and appliances. You have some leisure time. Do you like listening to music? Let me slide over here. What, what, what type of music do you like, ma'am? Uh, heavy metal. Okay, <laughs> he heavy metal. You take two garbage cans, you clank them together <laughs> like that, that's about as heavy. You can dance to that? I don't, no, well, 
I, I'm going to go with popular music. Okay, Ada Jones, Scott Joplin, George M. Cohan. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dan. <laughs> Do you know what the most popular song in 1908 in this country is? The number one song in 1908. I'm going to say the very first word of the song, and I guarantee you'll catch it. Uh, first word of the most popular song. It starts off with take. Me yeah. have to. Oh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. That's that's the very first word of that. That's the most popular song in 1908. Thomas Edison he invents a home phonograph machine in 19 1890s in 1877. 1877. This is a modern machine. He made a lot of improvements. He has these little music cylinders that he made. You slide the cylinder out. You put it on there. You give the machine a crank, and it would sound like this. As the cylinder turns, the needle goes across the cylinder, producing the music. Now. You remember this song, man? This came out in 1892. You remember this one? Uh, uh, yeah. No, yeah, 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 Charles, yeah. Charles Harris wrote this song. He made a lot of money, sold five million sheet musics with this called After the Ball. Sad story. It's about fiancés going to a dance. He goes to get refreshments, and when he turns around, she's kissing another guy on the cheek. Kind of scandalous. He comes screaming over, yells his engagement is off, storms out, doesn't give her a chance to explain that was her brother. He had just come home from the army. Tragic misunderstanding, ma'am. Yeah, exactly right. But we have happy songs on these cylinders also. They're between two cents and 19 cents for the cylinder. The machine itself is $32. Yeah, I saw the eyebrow raise there. Man. That's 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 half a month's pay for me. Now I'm getting this machine at the end of September. I have two boys at home. I worked out a deal with my two boys. They're not eating in September. If they don't eat in September, I have money to buy this machine, and I think they're going to hold out. They want the music as much as I do. But for you folks, thirty-two dollars. We can have it wrapped up and delivered to your house in two weeks. Talk about eating. Look at all the groceries we have here on the shelves. You know, companies don't change their packaging much. They want to look familiar to the customers year after year. Uh, the Campbell's Soup Can. You, you recognize that red and white can down there? Campbell's came out with that can in 1897. They haven't changed that can much in all these years. That gold medal on their soup can, they won that in 1900 at a Paris food show for having condensed soup in a can. They, nobody ever heard of that before. So Paris gave them a gold medal. And you look at your cans in the supermarket today, you'll see that gold medal on their can. We have eyeglasses over here. Let's see, eyeglass. the spectacles are dollar sixty-five. If you need an extra pair of eyeglasses for yourself, sir, right over here, dollar sixty-five, sir. We have hearing aids. Any, anybody hard of hearing? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I always get the spouses voicing things. You won't admit it. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, that's called selective hearing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This doesn't cure marital hard of hearing. Only medical hard of hearing. Okay. <laughs> you can have five of these on her. She's not going to pay attention to you. <laughs> it's a dollar thirty. Our most popular hearing aid right there. But you know, folks, the general store was more than just a place to come in and spend your money. People came here, they wanted to meet their neighbors. It was a gathering place in town. The other day, uh, Henry Ford was in here. You know, Mr. Ford, he's, he's making automobiles, right? A lot of people think Henry Ford invented the automobile. He didn't really invent the automobile. He invented a way for everybody to have an automobile. He called it mass production, assembly lines. This is the year, 1908. He starts up with this assembly line. He's going to go from two a day to 200 a day. He's calling it the Model T. He says you can get any color you want as long as it's black because that's the only color he's painting on the assembly line. And the price is coming down from $2,000 to under $1,000 for an automobile. He says everybody's going to afford it. Now, Mr. Forty was actually here because he was getting some medicine. Let me see what I can show you here. Oh, anybody have worms? You have worms? <laughs> no. Try eating it on cafeteria. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> we have a worm syrup over here. People swear by this worm syrup. Only trouble is the marketing folks have their hand on it. You've got to buy all three bottles. The instructions are written across all three bottles. You only buy one bottle. You don't know how to use it, but it's 50 cents for all three bottles. <laughs> You got a very lovely smile there, young lady. I I, I assume you brush your teeth, right? Yeah. Do, do you mix up the paste in a cup or you have toothpaste in a tube? I actually use it in a cup. You you'll you, toothpaste in a cup. You gotta get with the times, young lady. It's been out for about twelve years now. The Colgate Company has toothpaste toothpaste in a tube from eighteen ninety six they came out with that. And 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 then they put happy flavors in it, like a uh, peppermint and spirit, they want it to taste good. Mr. Hamlin's favorite flavor is milk of magnesia. He says that'll do two things at once. That'll settle your stomach while you brush your teeth. Now, if you like things that do two things at once, we have this over here. This is a, a laxative and a cough syrup all rolled into one. Oh, no. now, now, you gotta hope the timing is working on this. And, and, and it is. We guarantee the cough syrup will work on you before the laxative starts working on you. I don't have to go into too much explanation on that. All right? Anybody have any little babies in their lives? Uh, babies, grandbabies, anything like that? Anybody have any chill teenagers in their lives? Teenagers. Teenage okay, right over here. We have a golden relief tonic. 
This is really for malaria and respiratory ailments, but we found that just when a teenager is going to have an opinion, <laughs> you give them a tablespoon of this thing right over here. This has got 68% alcohol, a little bit of opium, and a dash of chloroform that they put in there. Teenager doesn't have a second opinion once they got an alcoholism. Now, the Food and Drug Act came out about two years ago, 1906. The government's catching up with us. They're starting to take a lot of this stuff off of off the shelf, including like a lot of the opium stuff in here. So you, you buy it now before they catch up with us. <laughs> we got shaving equipment for the men over here, beard trimmers, we got curling irons for the ladies. Okay, you can curl your hair really nice with that. You heat that on the stove and then you can curl your hair. You, you might burn your hair off a little bit until you get the hang of it. But anyway, anything you need, we have it right here. And oh my, ladies, ma'am, I gotta compliment you. You are the only person that's respectably dressed in this store right now. The other ladies here, they're showing their toes and ankles. They're showing your, you can't be you can't be going around town showing your ankles. The sheriff can have you locked up for looking provocative. Did you know that? We're gonna keep you girls out of trouble. We got shoes over here. Dollars seventy-five a pair for the shoes. Any color you want. We got white, black, or brown. Can't imagine you want any other color. We got little girl shoes here. They're ninety-eight cents, and the baby shoes here. They're twenty-nine cents. Now. I'll figure you out for about a size two, ma'am. Three. We go up to size five on the shelf, and then the cobbler, cobbler makes up a special pair for you, okay? For $1.75 a pair. Now, sir, you're going to have to buy the young lady this thing right here. Look at how pretty she would look with that ostrich plume. A lot of ladies like walking around town with dead bird feathers in their hair, but this ostrich plume is our best seller right here. It's only 58 cents. You put that, imagine her walking down St. George Street, people be pointing at her and talking about her. She walks down with that ostrich. You know, buy her too. Maybe she'll take off in the wind or something. You know? Let's go back into the kitchen, folks. You know when you're making bread? I hit a nerve, ma'am. I'm sorry. I, I see a tear coming out of your eye. Did I bring up a horror story for you when you're making bread? You got that big mess on the table, that flour and water on the table. It's a big mess. You don't have to do that anymore. This is the universal bread maker. This won a big award in the 1904 World's Fair in St. Louis. You put all the ingredients, the bread, the, the flour, the water, everything you want right in here. You give this a turn for three minutes time. In three minutes time, you got all the dough ready to go. All the dough you need to knead comes right out of here. You pop this into the oven, mold it into a loaf of bread, and you got yourself some bread. $1.79, we can have that wrapped up, delivered to your house in two weeks. Now, we got, we can turn your kitchen into a whiz bang modern affair. We got cores and pears and peelers and juicers and apple pear, oh, an apple pear right here. 53 cents, you do a whole bushel of no time flat. But, oh, so, sir, you're standing way over there, but I feel your pain. Way over here, I know what you're going through when you're milking the cow. You gotta wait for the milk to drop down to the bottom and the cream to rise up to the top. And that takes hours, we're impatient people. This is a milk and a cream separator. The Duval milk and cream separator, you put the whole shebang from the cow right in here. Instead of waiting hours, in just a matter of minutes, you'll be separating out that milk and cream. A little tight at first, but oh, no, you hear that? You hear that? You, you know what you're listening to? You're listening to science. You listen to the modern day technology going on right now. This is called centrifugal force. It's spinning 1800 revolutions per minute, taking that heavy milk, separating it out. Put to one side of the canister, light cream separates out to the other side of the canister. Turn a stick it here. Cream comes out here. Milk comes out here. Look at that lady up there in the advertisement. She's so tickled pink. Her little boy's walking out the door with a glass of milk as she separates out the milk and the cream. <laughs> $26.80. We can have that wrapped up, delivered to your house in two weeks. Now, what would you do with all the cream? What do you think people do with the cream? Coffee. Yeah, put in your coffee. Some people make butter. We have a butter churn over there. It takes about three hours with that butter churn. We have a glass jar of butter churns up there. They, they takes about 30 minutes with those butter churns up there. But you know what people are using that cream for now? It's that brand new sensational drink that is sweeping the nation. I don't know if you heard about it. It's called Milkshake. This is the Imperial Noiseless Milkshake Machine. You put the cream in here, some chocolate in here, some fruit in here, some ice, some sugar. Uh, we'll, we'll put an egg for frothiness. We'll roll over 21. Maybe we'll put a little moonshine, a little bourbon in here, okay? And you let the Imperial Noiseless Milkshake Machine do its thing.
<laughs> Shakes it. Anybody hear that? <laughs> if you didn't hear it, we have hearing aids for you over there. <laughs> this is actually a lesson in advertising. Do not believe everything you read in advertising. They gave it the name, Imperial North. The neighbors heard that. They're coming in from milk chicks right now. And this is nine dollars and sixty cents. Nine sixty. We can have this wrapped up and delivered to your house. Do you know how long that takes? I just want to make sure somebody's listening out there. <laughs> I don't want to have to go back to, back to point one over there. You know? <laughs> now, the Sears company actually recommends in their catalog you bolt this to the floor so it, it doesn't dance around your kitchen while you're making milkshakes. <laughs> now, now, we understand people coming to town. They don't have millions of dollars like Mr. Flasker and his rich friends. We can set up a line of credit for you. Mr. Cheatham is our finance manager. He sets up the line of credit. Uh, we get him going around 7 this evening because he starts his day with a milkshake and four minutes, you know. But anyway, uh, regret though ladies only the gentlemen only the gentlemen can set up a line of credit ladies don't handle money in st augustine in 1908 they're just not capable of handling money we're told you know but anyway so the gentleman sets up the line of credit and then the ladies coming you just sign his name and shop how does that sound <laughs> most ladies like that arrangement i mean <laughs> We got a bunch of stuff that came in on the SS St. Augustine this morning. I think I can get us back into the warehouse. Hold on a second. Yep. Just checking to make sure it's clear back here. Come on in the back, folks. We can. Oh, that's embarrassing, Mr. Cheatham. Come on in the back. We got all the money. They come from Jacksonville, the only seven cents a pound. Sam, I just want you to look at our price board as you walk through. We got eggs, All right. only two cents a piece. We got we the lowest prices in town, okay? Beef, There's pork, bacon, turkey, corn. bacon, all 10 cents a pound. Milk, on seven milk. cents a quart. Okay. We got some Swiss uh, We got a pound and a quarter of, of uh, sausage on the scale there. That's going to be eight cents at the end of the day. Is he hitting the meat yet, ma'am? Is he hitting the meat yet? No, no, he's got a little bit of sinus in his elbow. We gave him some lint this morning, but again, come on in the back, folks. Come on in the back. We got roast and cheese. You can use it after clean. I'll be around to answer questions at the end, but I will cover much of the stuff that's back here. And I want to impress upon you folks that there are no props back here. Some of this stuff goes back 200 years. It's all legitimate stuff from the Hamlet estate, okay? Uh, the Hamlets did not throw out anything. They had, they had hardware stores going back to the 1830s in New England and in 1875 here in St. Augustine. They saw a lot of inventions. When an invention came in, it made, you know, every year after that, people were tweaking it, trying to improve that invention. And, and by the end of several years, that original invention was obsolete, old fashioned. And, but the Hamlets didn't throw anything out. That gives us a good look at history, for example. That's exactly right, sir. We're going to look at that over right now. This is the first sewing machine that ever came out. The sewing machine was invented in 1846. The man's name was Elias Howe not famous most people don't know his name they know singer singer sewing machines because what happens he was a really good inventor he was a very bad salesman he couldn't sell his sewing machine mr singer takes his sewing machine goes around the country selling them like gangbusters he even put the singer name on his machine they, they, they kind of work out their differences basically in a lawsuit but they do work out their differences so but he was the inventing genius and singer was the marketing genius and, and the sewing machine was the biggest invention of the 19th century. Ladies were able to sew maybe 50 to 60 stitches per minute by hand. This was doing 300 stitches a minute, so it, it was quite fast. Mm -hmm. And once that came out, other sewing machine companies saw what he did, then reproduced it on their own, tweaked it a little bit, put it their own patent on it. Ladies ask all the time, show me something that's going to help with the housework. <laughs> we got something for you right over here, man. <laughs> How about this? <laughs> this is, you're right, this is old fashioned technology. It's just a broom, right? You know, uh, we, we live in a year, an age where there's new inventions coming out every single year. This is now, this is transportation from my mother in law, and we're going to put this over here. Because I have the 1908 vacuum cleaner I want to show off. This is the Rex vacuum cleaner. Sleek new model, only weighs 10 pounds. You put that on the floor, you have a handle up there. You pull back on the handle. Sucks up the dirt, you back up a step. <laughs> Sucks up the dirt, you back up a step. <laughs> so you, you can do a whole room like this in, in about four hours. Now that's not too bad, but remember I said inventions got tweaked every single year? This is coming out next year. This is the leisure vacuum. New technology, it's got piston power. The pistons go up and down, create a suction, put the dirt here. You, you can do this room down in about one hour, a lot better. Now, it runs on gasoline, so they recommend you vacuum with the windows open, otherwise you're going to kill the family, okay? 
Worst day of the week when ladies have to do their chores. Wash day, right? I don't think the gentleman knows what you're going through. On wash day, man. You've got to bring up 50 gallons of water from the backyard pump or the creek in the back. You're heating that water on your stove. You're bringing it over to your tub with the clothing soap, slish washing it back and forth. Ladies, we are going to save you time and energy. Hook up your wash tub to our treadmill, and then you get your goat. And you put your goat on the treadmill, and you have a little carrot stick right over here. That goat is going to chase that carrot stick. And look at that, you've got a goat-powered washing machine. The goat is doing the laundry for you. You don't have a goat, maybe you have a dog, and you put a piece of meat over here. Uh, I know goat, no dog. Maybe you got a child that's not so bright, and you can put a piece of candy right over here, and the child will chase the candy for a couple of hours while he does your laundry for you. Now, it's $2 for the wash tub, $12 for the treadmill. Now, another thing that ladies have to do, usually they're doing the household chores, and they're watching the youngsters, right? Well, we have Mr. Hamlin came up with this own idea. It's a way of rocking the baby to sleep while you're churning the butter. It's the Hamble cradle churn right here, and you take, where's the baby? Um, where's the baby? Lulu! Oh my lord, look at Lulu over here. What are you doing over here, Lulu? I hate when that happens. I don't know what she was doing in the wash tub. You can put Lulu right in here, and then you can just rock the baby to sleep while you're churning the butter. Getting two jobs done at once, you can actually hook up that treadmill there and have your goat do the same thing. Okay? Now the men like the treadmill technology, right? But you don't want to do laundry, and you don't want to rock a baby to sleep, so we have a man's treadmill for you over here, right over there. That's the heave the treadmill. You put your horse on that treadmill. When a horse runs that treadmill, you can hook that up to any farming equipment, like our threshing machine. $95 for this treadmill, $235 for the threshing machine. You can do a whole wheat field now in less than a day. Now you know you're saving yourself time with your housework and you're saving yourself time with your farm work. You have some leisure time. Would you like to learn how to ride a bicycle? Look at our bicycles here in Hamlet's. Now, a little history on this thing here. The bicycle, it was invented in 1817. The Baron von Drace in Germany, he had a big castle in Germany had a lot of gardens, miles of walkways in his gardens. He got tired walking, so he put a board over two wheels that he would sit on and he would scuff along like this, no pedals, and he would slide through his garden. His friends laughed at him and, until they all wanted one too, so they started to make, make them and manufacture them. The bicycle got tweaked, as most inventions do over the years. This one comes out in 1869, the high wheeler bicycle. It's got the big wheel in the front, little wheel in the back. It's got problems, it does not have a seat, and it does not have any brakes. You slow it down by dragging your feet on the pedals, hoping you can slow it until it stops, and then it slows down, at least so you can jump off. Doctors called that the skull cracker bicycle. Doctors called it that. Because you're standing up, you're pedaling with no seat, and then you hit a bump with that big front wheel, you get toppled over the handlebars. So doctors said you ride that within a week, we'll see you in the hospital. So this one comes out a few years later, called the high wheel safety bike. Now if we can get room over here, because I'm going to get George to lower that bike down on the ground here, we get a close look at it. Now, George, he's deaf in one ear, and I can catch his good ear now, I think. George? George, can you lower that bicycle, George? <laughs> now, you can see right away, this bicycle's got a lot of improvements. It's got a seat. It's got brakes. It's got the little wheel in the front, the big wheel in the back. You're not going to get toppled over the handlebars. Hard rubber tires will soften the road. A lot of bicycles have wooden wheels, metal wheels, kind of a bone shaking ride. The only question you might have about this bicycle could be... How do you steer? Well... How do you get on? How do you get on the bicycle, man? Yeah, that's the big question. You're exactly right. Now, bicycle riding was really for athletic gentlemen. Uh, late ladies wouldn't ride a bicycle like this. Now, I'm not athletic. I'm not a gentleman and they tell me I have to demonstrate this bicycle. <laughs> I kind of approach this thing like a nudist going over a barbed wire fence, if you know what I'm talking about, but I, I think that paints a picture for you. But anyway, I, I did figure it out. You kind of run alongside the bicycle, the wheel goes around, the pedal goes around, when the pedal hits a down position like that, you put your outside foot on it, it'll throw you up and over, swing your leg around, come down on the seat, nice and gentle, because it's got a big metal bar under there. I think the gentlemen understand that. Now, you ride the bicycle, you wave to your friends, and then the thought hits you, I gotta get off this thing. So you kind of slow it down with the brake, and when it goes slow enough, you swing your leg around, you hop off on the side, you jump off on the back. Anyway, you jump off, you, you gotta do this by a grassy patch, a soft landing place or anything. Any, but it's $8.75 for the bicycle, $8.75. 
Oh, and that comes with a one-day class at the Alcazar Hotel. Mr. Flagler has a bicycle academy there. He'll teach you how to ride the bicycle. And then when you pass the class, you get a license. Of course, you need a license to ride a bicycle in St. Augustine. You don't need a license to drive an automobile. I don't know who made the law, but you need a bicycle license. Now, for the ladies, we have a nice, safe bicycle up there, that three-wheeler. Look at that bicycle up there. You, you, you can wear your dress on that bicycle. I'll guarantee you'll get to where you're going in one piece on that bicycle up there. I, I, I can't make that guarantee with this bicycle down here. Let's see what else I can show you. Anybody notice our chandelier? Yeah. What do you think is special about that chandelier? Hmm? It's gonna be heavy. What's, what, what? It's gonna be heavy. Big, heavy, know. higher chandelier. <laughs> but the first thing that hits you in the face when you look up at that chandelier is what? The lights. Electric lights. Yeah, the electric lights. Yes, sir. Thomas Edison, he's putting the electricity in the Ponce de Leon Hotel for Mr. Flagler. Folks, I can't stress how unusual that is, a real building in the 1880s, to have electricity. The White House doesn't even have electricity yet. White House gets it 1891. So Mr. Flagler's fancy hotel, he's years ahead of the White House. He doesn't have to change candles out every single day. Because those lights are good for four days. They burn out every four days. He's actually happy about that. You may have heard that people are afraid of the electricity. They go to the hotel and they go to the front desk and they say, I'm going up to my room. Can you have somebody come up and turn on my lights for me? Nobody wants to hit the button on the wall. So Mr. Flagler has a whole staff follow you around and they'll turn on the electric lights for you and when you get to your room. Nobody wants to, they know the electricity's in the room. Let me see if I can show you this thing right over here. This is our, our final item here. It's called a portable pantry. Now, you know when you go travel across the state and you go by wagon, it can take you several days to get from point A to point B by wagon. So you had to pack your food goods in the back of the wagon. This is just a ticket for you. All your food goods were going here. You had your spices were going here. Uh, we got a clock up there that's right two times a day. We got a coffee grinder <laughs> over here. Anything you needed, you had in your portable pantry. We don't go by wagon much anymore. We go by automobile, we go by train. What used to take days, now just takes a few hours to get from here to there. This is going out of style. It's almost obsolete. And we'll just put this back on the shelf. No need to try to pawn this off on you, okay? But anyway, Mr. Hamlin does like to know who came through the store. You have these little cards available to you. We have some cards on the back table over there, some cards in the trolley center over there. Uh, comment cards. You can uh, fill out one of the comment cards. Tell Mr. Hamlin what you thought of the oldest store. Does anybody remember my name? Orville? Orville, yeah. Orville. Tell, tell them what you thought of Orville, O-R-V-I-L-L-E, and the oldest store. Drop it in the mail. Mr. Hamlin will pay for your postage. I asked for a raise last week. He said no, but I know he'll pay for your postage, okay? <laughs> and you want to go a step further, we have a gossip man in town. His last name is Mr. Advisor, uh, Trip Advisor. You tell Mr. Trip Advisor what you thought of the oldest store in Orville. He gossips all over the world. And if you, if you make it a good review, the beatings will stop. I'll truly appreciate that. <laughs> We're going to invite you folks to walk around the back end over here. Uh, can, I, can I ask you a question? Sure, go ahead. Right. Do we happen to know what these things are? Uh, good, good question. There, we've gotten several parts. They link together, and we thought that they might be uh, just uh, like a piping to clean out, uh, like a, a, a underground. It could be a fence post. It could be, we also thought that you could attach uh, a shovel or, or, or something on the bottom end, and it could be a handle for whatever. We, we, we've got a lot of different descriptions on what that could be. Uh, and we have some in the front store. People actually pick up on that in the front store. And you, 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 there's about 10,000 items back here. I keep about 100. Yes. Yes. You know, and, 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 and you picked one I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Which is a pretty good pretty good chance of that happening. So I'll, I'll call your attention, like something here, like this vanity. People, you know, it's a ma major part of the floor here. Like this vanity is something that, and just to show you, this is all legitimate stuff. This has been sitting here since the 1880s. Flagler rejected delivery on this vanity. It, it came in as mahogany. All the vanities in his hotel are cherry wood, and he wouldn't take a mahogany vanity. So Mr. Flagler had to put this in his warehouse, and he's yet to sell that. And it's been sitting in the warehouse since the 1880s. Uh, I don't know what that's worth. I'm sure it's worth a lot more, a lot more money now than what it was in the 1880s. But uh, some people say that mahogany costs more to ship because it's heavier than cherry wood, and Mr. Flagler was chasing on the freight, you know. But anyway, I don't think that was the case. He just, he's very persnickety. He only wants cherry wood in his, in his rooms. So, I'm going to invite you folks to walk around the back end over here. There's a lot more to see. Oh, there's a wall of washing machines, all right? 
Uh, we have uh, some electric machines, some gasoline machines, and that's the machines of the future. Uh, it shows just a little bit how Maytag got involved in the, in the washing machine business. I hope somebody's doing their laundry back there. <laughs> we go down around the corner, we send party line phones, viewing scopes, uh, we have a uh, uh, some uh, fun collections, other inventions. There's a lot more to see. Take your time walking through, folks. I'll come around the other side and ask one or two more questions for you. But take your time walking through. Go ahead. Thank you again for visiting. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. They got involved in washing machines in 1907. They were a farm equipment company and it wasn't doing well, so washing machines were just coming out and he decided to hop on that bandwagon and he started to make washing machines and that became a big a big deal for him, you know? Yeah. See, you got to compact disc machine. Yeah, actually, this is, this is the largest model that the Regina <laughs> Music Company makes and it's a self-changing disc. Now, uh, a lot of questions can arise with this. I don't know how heavy those discs are. I think it holds four, and you can, it, it, it will self-change, and uh, you know, and I don't know how many songs are on that disc with all those markings on it, but they did have a, a small, a couple of smaller models that would fit on a disc, and that's their largest floor model, the Regina machine. Now, now um, a lot of people ask the question, is this the store? And the answer to that is no. The actual store is 11 Avales Street. It's, it's a big building on Avales Street. Avales is the oldest street in the country. It was formed in, uh, built in 1565 when the city was started. And it's a big building on left side, 11 Avales. It uh, was built in the 1800s. Uh, and it's got restaurants and art galleries in there now. But that was a plaque on the wall says Hamblin Hardware, 1875 to 1930. That was Hamblin's hardware store when he first started here, and then he picked up and moved around town. Now, um, everything in here, though, is legitimate. The Old Town Trolley Historic Tours of America bought the Hamblin estate in 2003. It was several warehouses and storage units filled with material like this. And then they put two buildings together on this campus here, because they own this property, and built a museum out of, you know, out of the material. But like that was the, the bread wagon that went down in 1880, 1890s, Bowler's Bakery bread wagon with you know, bread and nickel a loaf, you know? So, you know, they, they basically you know, all opened up these warehouses and we have a great art department who kind of cleaned up a lot of this material and refurbished it so it would be presentable. I'm told there are still two other warehouses with material that have yet to get out to the public. You know, so the Hamblin saved everything. They did not throw out anything. You know, and I, I look at this and I think like American pickers would have a field day coming Ooh, through here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it, it, you know it's, it's millions of dollars worth of stuff. Millions of dollars worth of stuff. 